This is the big moment that we're at, I think. Individualism and collectivism have run out of road because both neglect the social, society, the body politic, the place where intermedia institutions promote a good, promote character, and pervert, promote virtue that is neither market nor state-based. They both dissolve rather than nurture relationships. The balance of interests, the idea that there has to be a common good where people actually negotiate the outcome, is the basis of our distinctive political tradition here. The truth that we've got to confront is that neither the state nor the market can conceptualize what you see clearly. The necessity of trust, a sense of belonging and place, the necessity of skill, and the institutions required to preserve and maintain the very fundamental things, honesty, vocation, and knowledge. Jeremiah's edict of exile in chapter 29, verse seven, we must take it to heart. Now, the translation that Justin gave it was seek the welfare of the city. The word is shalom, and now shalom means peace, it means welfare, it means prosperity, and it means goodness. Take your pick. But the point is, is to seek the good of the city, the welfare of the city, the peace of the city, for in its peace you will find peace. The common good can only be brokered if the church is stronger and truer to its tradition, to its practices that place relationship, witness, testimony and love. Essentially, there's not enough love in the system. We've put our faith in a very administrative, procedural, transactional system and 38p more or less a week is not the transformative agenda here. It's the lack of relationships in people's lives, their lack of power, agency, and hope. You understand not only the possibility, but the necessity of redemption. That it is possible to be good. It is possible to change, for there to be real change. It's possible to be better. And this is only to be found in relationships of trust, of faithfulness, and of experience.